back to another edition of the podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pagani, joined alongside Flint Firebirds defenseman, Zach Terry. Zach, welcome to the podcast. Thank you again for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. No problem. Happy to help. How are, how are you today? How have things been going for the team recently, your individual performance? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. You know, good, uh, good week of practices here and, you know, the team, uh, the team as a whole, we've been doing, doing pretty well winning some, uh, games and, you know, I think individual performance comes hand in hand with team success. So, you know, we've, we've been, uh, doing pretty well as a team for the most part. And I think, uh, you know, that helps each, each individual guy on our team succeed on an individual level, as well as the team level. You guys are on a bit of a slide right now. What can the team do to get off the schneid? Uh, you know, I think it's all about, you know, short memory. The The reality of it is we come back on Saturday and have another game to play. You know, there's no reason to hit the panic button. We're, we're in a good spot and, you know, we have the system. So, you know, watch a video, critique our game and, uh, yeah, go from there, just use, use what we've done and uh, use it as learning and just, you know, onward and upward. Talking about your most recent game, you guys played a very good team in Windsor. In your opinion, what went wrong with the game and how you guys, and how are you guys going to use that game to learn? Uh, you know, obviously Windsor, they're, they're a really strong team offensively and defensively all the way through. Um, you know, I think we, it was a pretty competitive game off the start. And then there was a couple minutes skid where we, gave up a couple goals, you know, we got into penalty trouble. I think we had seven, uh, seven penalty kills that game. And, you know, it, uh, I think we, we battled back hard as a team, uh, you know, their goalie made a few good saves. We missed a few chances and unfortunately that's how we went. So, you know, watch some video, learn from it, the good and the bad and move forward to this weekend. Getting into your story a bit here, who, you know, what, was there a player growing up who you wanted to model your game after? Um, I, I wouldn't say growing up too much there was uh, any any particular players I was looking to model my game after. You know, I was always just watching. I was watching a lot of the Leafs and whoever they were playing just because of living in the GTA. That's uh, kind of the coverage you get. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say there was any anyone in particular until you know you get older and you start to you know recognize your your individual game a little bit more as uh, as you transition from you know minor midget into the junior ranks and and wherever you go from there was there any big influence on you to start hockey was it your dad was it watching the Leafs um I'd say a lot of it. it's from my family uh you know my grandpa is big big into playing and and roughing and my dad played all the way growing up and I have a brother who's three years older who played so I think uh I just kind of got into it that way. You know, it was kind of in my family and yeah, a little, little competitive thing to do with my brother, I guess. Yeah. You know, we always love uh, growing up with brothers and playing mini sticks. I'm sure that you can relate to that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I got, I uh, got hit into a bookcase in the basement a few times that I can remember of for sure. Born in Oakville. How much time was spent at the rink watching the Rangers? Uh, uh, a lot, you know, whether it, whatever team it may have been, you know, the uh, 1997 Oakville team had a pretty good team. So I know we went out and watched a few of those games and, you know, whether it be my brother or, or those games or even, you know, the Oakville Blades, the junior A team there, definitely a lot of hours spent, uh, spent in the rinks for sure. I love 16 mile. That arena there is beautiful, especially rank one with the bowl seating, just the best. Yeah. In your U16 year, you had the chance to play with Luke Evangelista on the Oakville Rangers. What has it been like seeing his game grow and making sure he doesn't put you in a spin cycle? Uh, you know, obviously, obviously for him, I'm happy with him. I want to see, you know, all the guys I played with growing up uh, succeed and, you know, do well and move forward. Uh, it's always, always fun to play against, you know, your old teammates and your old buddies. So, yeah, I've had some, some good battles and everything this year, but, you know, just defend him just as well as you would any uh, any of the other best players in the league, right? Just knowing they're on the ice and yeah. He's such an impact player for the Knights and, you know, like hats off to him for getting drafted to Nashville. Yeah, for sure. Obviously uh, I'm, I'm happy for him. You know, I want, want the best for all my buddies growing up and, you know, it was a, a good honor for him and good that he's doing well with them the past couple of years. 
Now, your season that year, you had 43 points, but five points in five games during the OHL Cup. What was your biggest takeaway from playing in the OHL Cup? Um, It was honestly just a memorable experience. And, you know, I think uh, it, you know, showed me on a personal level I can play with with the best of the best and dominate in, in those games out there. You know, it was unfortunate that our team fell a little bit short, but, uh, you know, it was, it was nice to be able to play a big role in that team. And, you know, we played some, some good hard fought games and yeah, it was a great, great experience. Great one term member for sure. In the 2018 OHL draft, you were selected by the Guelph storm in the second round. What do you remember from draft day? When I got drafted, I was actually uh, in the middle of playing a lacrosse game in uh, in Toronto. Oh wow! Yeah, when when the draft was going on, so that was interesting. My parents uh, parents called me to the sidelines to tell me where I was picked. You know, I knew roughly roughly what range it was probably going to be in, but uh, yeah, they they called me over and told me that I was uh, picked in the second round of Guelph. So then I I finished out playing that game drove from Toronto to Guelph to uh, meet the coaching staff, the, the equipment staff, do a couple interviews. And then I drove back to Toronto to play uh, another game that night. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. It was an interesting and memorable day for sure. That's when your parents told you that your lacrosse days are over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Your first OHL game came against the Windsor Spitfires. What do you remember from that game? Uh, yeah, it was definitely a, a memorable one and maybe not, not so much so in the, uh, the positive books. I think I, I played maybe three shifts or so, but it was definitely um, an eye-opening experience to, you know, what the, what the OHL is going to be, you know, the, the physicality, the pace, the skill. So it was kind of good to have that early and be like, you know, this is what's going to be expected of you. And you mentioned that you had three shifts that game, but did you also learn a lot just from watching the game and how the guys went about their shifts, you know, the character of the team there? Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, in, in my 16 year old season there, you know, playing time was a little bit more difficult to come by. We had a really strong team that year. Um, And I would say honestly, more so of, what I learned and kind of development was through practicing against the the caliber of players that we had with, you know, Nick Suzuki, Isaac Radcliffe, all, all guys like that. And, you know, seeing their, their mannerisms within the game, daily habits, uh, pregame preparation, postgame recovery, all things like that, I think is where the uh, biggest, biggest learning came from that season. Your first OHL goal was scored against Kingston. What's the story behind that? Yeah, it was uh, it was exciting for sure. I mean, I shot a puck off a guy and it came back to me and I, I put it back towards the net and it hopped in. It was, uh, I think, February 2nd or, or 4th or something like that. So it was late in the season. So it was uh, definitely a relief for sure. Nice to, nice to get that one out of the way and nice to do it against one of my buddies too. So Were your parents in the stands? Yeah, yeah, they uh, they came to the game, so it was nice to uh, to have them there to see that as well. That's really great, honestly, because sometimes you know OHO players they score their first goal without their family in the stands. Yeah, yeah, no, my parents uh, they they traveled to a lot of the games that year whenever they could, so it was nice uh, nice to do that with them there. What do you remember most from your rookie season? Um, I think a, a lot of it is the playoff run we had and, and the Memorial Cup. I mean, it was an unbelievable experience. And, you know, I learned learned a lot from the all the NHL talent we had on that team. And, you know, I think it taught a lot about how to win. You know, we, we faced a lot of adversity and that going down 3 nothing to London, 3-1 to Saginaw, 2 nothing to Ottawa. Um and then, you know, obviously the Memorial Cup was an unbelievable experience and opportunity to have. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, even more so now that I'm a little bit older, I can kind of come to appreciate and realize, you know, what the magnitude of what I was able to experience was maybe more so than, than when I was a little bit younger. You also played on Team Canada Black. Can you describe the feelings you got when you donned that Team Canada jersey? Yeah, obviously it was a a surreal experience. Anytime to be able to represent your country is, 
is an incredible feeling. Um, yeah, there's no no greater honor than that. And, you know, it was a first class tournament for sure. Nice to be able to compete against the best in the world and and see how you uh, you stack up. You know, we played guys like Lucas Raymond, Alex Holtz, those guys, right? So uh, it was for sure a fun experience. And again, we fell a little bit short, but nice to uh, get to play with a different group of guys, you know, some high end skill on the team I was on. And yeah, just a good experience to be able to play for uh, Canada. You were on a team that featured Jack Barr, Quinn Byfield, and Ryan O'Rourke, plus many others. How did that mini camp help you elevate your game? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the best of the best are always going to compete in battle, you know, so whether it be practice or anything like that, it, it requires you to elevate your game. And, you know, I think all those guys are, are great players and, you know, regardless of whether the same age as you or anybody older, I think there's little things you can pull from other people's games and kind of maybe a move they do in a specific situation or things like that, that you can add to your game. So it's, you know, good to be able to meet some new guys, play with some new guys and and compete with the best. Speaking on that OHL cup run, you know, it must be really good for you that you experienced it so young and that you can add that experience to the younger players that are on the Flint Firebirds this year. Yeah, for sure. You know, I think we have a competitive team here in Flint. And like I said, you know, I think, sometimes it takes a little bit of, you know, getting older and a little more mature to understand some of the things you went through and appreciate them. And, you know, I just think I'm trying to resonate some of the same messages that, you know, our team had some of the experiences through the locker room and, you know, trying to help the young guys understand kind of what, what the magnitude of what's going on is and um, just to, to live in the moment and really, really enjoy everything that's uh, that's coming forward here in the shortened 2019-20 season you guys were poised to play Kitchener in the playoffs again and in the year prior you guys had swept the series against them is there some big rivalry between the two teams yeah for sure uh you know Guelph and Kitchener are so close it's always uh always a good battle between those teams you know regardless of of where they sit in the standings or who they got it's always going to be a uh, a physical game, a tough game, a chippy game. And yeah, it's, you know, especially in playoffs, the playoff type hockey, it's, it's always exciting to play. And I think, you know, that's what uh, all, all real big time competitors crave and look forward to. So yeah, it would have been a good series for sure. How did you find out that the league was going to get, you know, suspended, but then shut down? Um, So we just had uh, our head coach at the time, George Burnett, call us, us all into a meeting at the room um at the rink that day and just kind of said you know hey this is this is what's happening um so we left uh left the rink that day didn't really know know all of what was going on and then I can't remember exactly how it happened whether we we had a zoom call or or something the next morning that was like hey we're going to be going home for a few weeks here um and then, yeah, it just went went from there, I guess. How did you use the extended break to better yourself, whether it's on the ice or off the ice? Um, yeah, it was definitely a little more difficult to get on the ice through the uh, the start of the break uh, with rink closures and and everything, and even gym closures. But those were a little easier to work around. So I think it was uh, just you know you could take that time to sit around and wait for the season or use it to your advantage. So I was in the gym, you know, uh, five times a week and, and skating when I could just, to, you know, build the speed and strength um, and athleticism just for, you know, whenever we were, were called back to play that I could be in, in the best shape possible to uh, succeed and, and compete against the biggest and best guys. Did you feel as though that you were led on by the Ontario, you know, minister of sport to play? Because at some point, you know, during that shutdown, they're like, all right, here's a target date, scratch that. Here's another target date. It seemed like you guys were getting led on from that perspective. Yeah, it was definitely uh, a little difficult to follow, especially with training and, and everything too, because you're ramping up your training, toning down your training based on kind of what phase you're in, when you're going to be, going to training camps. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, we were going to go this time and then it was extended a month and then 
you know, extended another month or two. So it was the, the uncertainty was definitely difficult for, I think most, if not all players in the OHL. So that was definitely difficult to overcome, but you know, just the, uh, adversity and resilience it's all things that we have to learn to you know deal with and let let better ourselves in the summer of 2020 you got notice of being traded to flint what were your reactions when you found out um i think it was definitely just a lot of excitement for the new opportunity you know i think it was a mutual understanding that it was time for for a fresh start and you know the organization of flint had been been on the uprise for sure and they had a good team that year good staff you know good group of guys that I know uh knew a few of so it was definitely a lot of excitement um you know I think the whole COVID shutdown extended that a little bit too because I was never able to you know get down there be in the facilities meet the guys everything so it was definitely a, a nice experience when I got down to come to camp this year how did you end up picking number 44 um yeah it was it was my old lacrosse number for sure so that was and you know I've had a lot of success in lacrosse so I thought it was uh time for a change and and that could be a good reason and then there was a couple other little personal things in, in there as well so it seemed like a fitting number we spoke about the inconsistency with the OHO and the return to play, but how much joy does it bring to you that, you know, this season, the OHO was so committed to getting a full season in because, you know, we look at all the postponements from the different games. Yeah, for sure. You know, I can't imagine it would have been easy to be one of the people dealing with scheduling at the offices here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, for sure, it was great to uh, have that communicated commitment from the OHL to know that they weren't weren't going to pull the plug on it and they were going to do everything they could to uh, you know ensure we we had our season and and could do it in the safest manner possible. And you know, I think that was a big big boost for all the guys considering we lost last season. So it was nice that we've been able to uh, play through all the way to date so far, regardless of cancellations and all that. It got weird there for a second with no fans in the stands. Can you at least speak to that experience? Yeah, that was uh, weird would be a good way to describe it. You know, I think our first game in Canada with no fans was at Budweiser Gardens. So, you know, it's a rink for, oh, yeah. for guys that have played in the league. You know, you're sitting in front of 9,000 fans. Uh, so it was definitely weird seeing that rink empty. It reminded me a little bit of a time in minor midget when we uh, played a game there. Um, so yeah, that was weird. And then, you know, a couple other rinks like in, uh, in Sarnia, for example, had some cardboard cut out of celebrities with uh, some jerseys over the seat. So it was, it was kind of cool just to see, you know, the little different things that uh, different teams did with because it, I like your comment there because um, what is it? I was going to say that I, uh, you know, it is a, a really weird, like, did, you know, did it take a couple of shifts for it to settle in? Cause sometimes hockey players, they just zone out the crowd and they kind of don't pay attention to it. So in your case, like how many shifts did it take for you to kind of realize like, there's no one cheering here. There's no one, you know, chirping at me. Um, I wouldn't say there was, there was really any adjustment period. You know, I think, like you said, we're pretty focused on the ice with what, um, what, you know, what we're doing out in the game, you know, talking, just kind of zoned in and on that. So I, I'd say it was, you know, a little bit weird around warmups and stuff when you're maybe not as, as dialed in oh, true, um, yeah. to, to an individual shift, but, you know, I'd say big, it was definitely a little bit of getting used to in places like London with, uh, black seats when a puck would get flipped up in the air you could you could lose it in the seats a little bit um yes yeah, so I can imagine it was maybe a little difficult on goalies sometimes but I wouldn't say playability as a whole changed uh, too much you're having a career year with 17 points in 58 games did it take a while for you to get adjusted to the systems that are being run in Flynn um I wouldn't I wouldn't say too much you know I think uh we've had a good group that's came together since since the start um and you know I 
you know, started the year a little bit slow on a personal level, but after Christmas had a, had a good stretch with some, some points that were nice, but you know, my game's definitely, you know, more defensive, transitional, things like that. So I, I don't put a ton of stock into the points, but it's definitely a nice little uh, boost that I'm having a career year and been able to uh, put the puck in the net a few times to help with confidence for sure. Speak of your dis- defensive, def- defensive defenseman play there. You, like how often do you use your size to your game? Cause you're listed as like six foot. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd say, you know, the height definitely helps my reach and my uh, skating. I wouldn't say I'm, you know, an overly physical or bruising defenseman by any means, but I definitely think uh, I use, use my length and my stick to my advantage, you know, whether it be defending a guy in the corner or off the rush. Given all the quality players that you've played with, how does Brennan Ottman stand out to you? Um, he's, uh, he's a great player for sure. You know, I think he um, plays a complete game with a uh, super high competitive nature. You know, I think it's someone that evidently has the knack to put the puck in the net for sure. But I think uh, a big thing with him is, you know, his commitment to, to the full ice game, you know, a lot of guys who are scoring, you know, in the upwards of 80 points, you know, 40 goals, 50 goals, whatever it may be. The, the big thing that stands out with him is his ability to, you know, drop to block shots and, you know, commit to physical games, the, the grunt and dirty work that, you know, maybe gets a little bit underappreciated, especially, you know, for him, I think a lot of people look more at the stats, but I think there is a lot more to his game um, than just being able to, you know, his exceptional ability to put the puck in the net. You guys are having a tremendous season and that shouldn't be an understatement at all as the number one seed currently Windsor, London and the Sioux are all trying to catch you guys. How important are these next set of games this weekend to continue to distance yourself? Um, You know, I think every, every weekend from now until the end of the regular season is going to be important because, you know, the top four, like you said, is only separated by a few points here and there. So there's not a lot of, not a lot of wiggle room for sure. So every, every win is going to be, going to be key coming down the stretch. So, you know, we're just focusing on what we can control our game, how we can go perform uh, our best, uh, our best on the ice here and try and see it as high as we can at the end of the uh, end of the season. How has this team grown from the adversity that you guys have faced? Um, like I said, I think we have a, have a pretty close, close group in the locker room and, you know, any adversity we've faced this year, I think we've, you know, handled it within the team, within the leaders, veteran guys on the team. And, you know, no matter what a beach kind of deal with it, if we have to deal with it, look past it. And ultimately at the end of the day, every weekend, we're going to have to go out on the ice, you know, whether it be home or away and play 60 minutes. So I think having that as the focus and, you know, blocking out some of the noise and just going and playing has helped the uh the success of our team this next question you might not be able to answer but it's something interesting that i researched uh luke cavalier your goalie he has 13 pims so far this season do you know if those are just majority of like delay of game or like what's happening there uh i want to say they all came on the same play to be completely honest um yeah at the end of uh game a couple weeks ago there was a, a charging behind the net and, you know, a scrum ensued and Guelph player came in and made it a three on two with a couple of, of our guys. So, you know, he came in, he's a passionate guy. So he was, you know, coming in to protect his team and, and help out and grabbed a guy and, you know, there's a couple of punches thrown and yeah, it went from there. Well, I mean, that's pretty impressive if it, if it all came on one play, I gotta say. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It was an uh, exciting end of the game, I guess you could uh, say. Since you are an OHL veteran and me as a big OHL fan, one of the better things that the OHL has done this season has brought back the teddy bear toss game. Uh, have you played any of those? Yeah, yeah, no, I've played in a couple in, in my career. I know there was the two in Guelph that we had uh, in my first and second year. Um ours in Flint this year. I don't know if I've played in any on the road or not. I can't, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, they're obviously 
obviously fun to do, you know, go out and help with the cleanup, get some pictures. Uh, yeah. And obviously it's, it's goes to a great cause as well. So it's, it's always a fun game to play and always a nice little battle of who's going to be able to get, get the goal. Is that a game kind of that, is that a game that you kind of circle on your calendar, the teddy bear toss game? Yeah, for sure. You know, I think a lot of the uh, specialty nights like that are ones that you look forward to just because it's, you know, a little different, little change of pace. Uh, yeah. And it's just a little exciting thing as a part that you don't get too often, you know, once a year. So uh, yeah, it's always, always fun to play. As we're closing off this interview here, do you have any advice for younger hockey players? Um, you know, I think with, with younger players, it's just come in and work your hardest every day and, you know, do something to better yourself every day because, um, you know, it's not always going to come down to skill and some of the best players, well, all of the best players work, work hard and, uh, you can, you can make it a long way in sports with, you know, being determined and having that will and work. Um, I think that that's a bigger aspect than the ability and, you know, all the practice, the ability and skill and, you know, whatever it may be will come along with, with that. So I think, you know, just working at it, not getting discouraged and yeah, everything uh, along those lines is, is going to be key to success for them. I'd like to thank again, Zach Terry for joining me on today's podcast. Thank you again, Zach. Yeah. Thanks for having me.